everybody, it's Matt here from Terra Media, and today I want to talk to you about how to sync your WooCommerce products from your WooCommerce store into Google Shopping via the Google Merchant Center. We're going to use a plugin called Customer Reviews for WooCommerce. Now, if you don't already have Customer Reviews for WooCommerce set up, I recommend you go to my video here and follow those instructions to install it and configure it, and then come back. I'll wait for you. All right, you're back. So head into your WordPress dashboard and come down to the reviews section in the menu and then go to Google. You'll see we have our main Google integration settings. So first things first, we want to make sure we're generating an XML product feed. We need that to submit to Google. And if we have variable products, we also want to turn on this include product variants option. Below that, we have our product feed URL. Now this is the XML feed that's generated to submit to Google Merchant Center. And below that we have the generate product review feed. Now, if you don't have any reviews yet, don't worry about using it. So right now we can go ahead and save changes down the bottom of that screen. Back up the top of the page, head to the categories option. Within categories, it will show all the categories you currently have in your WooCommerce store. And from here, we can then map them to Google Shopping categories, or we can exclude them. So I am going to exclude the uncategorized category and I'm going to map WordPress. Now, I think that would probably be under web. So I'm just going to search here and I've found this option for web design software. That's pretty accurate. So I'm going to go with that. To try different things depending on your industry. It can be hard to find the category that you want, but just type in here uh, different relevant terms until you find a matching category. Once you've mapped all of the categories that you want to sync, go ahead and click the blue save changes button. Now that that's done, we'll head up to the product identifiers section. Now this one is really, really important because this includes all of the information that Google uses to actually map all of the data it has about your products together. So head there. And from this section, we can choose what additional fields we want to enable in WooCommerce and what fields we want to map to the Google shopping identifiers. So if you don't have a GTIN number provided, and that's a UPC, EAN, JAN, or ISBN uh, through another plugin, turn this on, and that will give you a GTIN field in your WooCommerce products that you can then add the appropriate number to. You can add a manufacturer part number field if you need to. I usually just use the SKU field for this that's already in WooCommerce and don't bother adding this one. But if you're a reseller of products and you have your own SKUs that are separate from the manufacturer part numbers, you might want to turn that on. Brand. So if you sell products from a whole range of different manufacturers and you don't already have a brand field configured to differentiate them, turn on the brand field option and that will create a field for you in WooCommerce on your product edit screen. If you only sell from one manufacturer or you are the manufacturer, you can use this brand static field instead to type in your brand. And so basically if the field is empty, customer reviews will use this static identifier instead. The identifier exists option is used to indicate whether or not you've actually configured product identifiers for the products in question. So it adds a field on your product edit screen that lets you say the product identifiers just don't exist. Generally speaking, you wanna make sure you have your product identifiers configured, but if you do have products that just don't have particular identifiers for some reason, turn that on. Now we wanna map our fields to the Google Shopping identifier. So the product ID in Google Shopping, normally I would map either the WooCommerce product ID field or the product SKU. The SKU is probably easier to identify in Google Shopping, but if you don't use them, then you'll need to choose something else. You could alternatively use the manufacturer part number or the GTIN. The GTIN, I will now map to our product GTIN field that customer reviews for WooCommerce is adding for us. I'll also map the product MPN field to the MPN. And for the brand, I'm going to map our product brand field. Once we're done here, save those changes. Now, before we go any further, I'll just show you the changes on the product edit screen that these product identifiers have made. So if we go to a product, in this case, I've got a cap here. 
Now, at the moment, this is a standard product page, nothing else added. Uh, the inventory screen is where we'll see a lot of things change here. So if I refresh this now, and we then head to inventory, you can see below the SKU, we've now got this GTIN, MPN, brand and identifier exists fields. Simply fill them in with the appropriate details. So your GTIN field can contain either a EAN, ISPN, UPC or JAN. And if you don't have those identifiers, tick the identifier exists box to specify that as no in your Google Shopping feed. Now only the fields that you enabled in the product identifiers section will actually show up here. So if for example, you didn't enable the MPN field, it would not be here. If you're using a variable product, you will only see these options on the base inventory screen. Back on our customer reviews for WooCommerce Google services settings, head back to the overview screen. From this screen, if we scroll down to our status, we can now see that we've got a category mapped. We've got four product identifiers mapped, which is awesome. We don't currently have any products with a GTN MPN or brand. Let's say I've filled in all these fields and I'm ready to submit my feed to Google Merchant Center. First off, make sure you actually have a Google Merchant Center account. If not, head to merchants.google.com and sign up. So once you have an account on Google Merchant Center, it'll look a bit like this. So to add our XML feed for our products in, we wanna to go to the products subsection here in the menu and down to feeds. Under primary feeds, click the plus button, specify the country that you're targeting, for us, this one's Australia, and the language. Then choose what destinations you are actually targeting these products towards, display ads, shopping ads, surfaces across Google, and you can add additional countries here. And then press continue. On this screen, we'll give our feed a name, and we want to use a scheduled fetch, and then click continue. The file name doesn't matter because we are gonna be using a file URL, so just give it a name that makes sense to you. If you update your products frequently, I would set this as a daily fetch. If not, you could leave it as weekly or monthly and specify a time and what time zone. But if your website has busy times, you might wanna choose a time when it is less busy. In the file URL field, we wanna put the actual URL to our XML feed. So to get that, head back over to the Google Reviews Overview page where we have this product feed URL field and copy that. Come over to your Google Merchant Center, paste it in this file URL field, and then click Create Feed. Google will now attempt to fetch your feed, and it will check to see if there's any issues at all. That may take a little bit of time, depending on how big your feed actually is, uh, and it will go through and process it and let you know if there are any errors. Okay, so we're done. We've got products starting to go into Google Merchant Center. We've got this big list of them here in our all products and it'll tell us what statuses they have, if there's any issues and so on. So I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to like it and also subscribe to my channel for more videos in our customer reviews for WooCommerce series. And I look forward to seeing you here again next time. Bye.